Yes, we are an international uh, environmental NGO and we are basically scrutinizing carbon markets to ensure that they really meet climate goals. So we look at the different trading mechanisms that are happening on the, the Kyoto Protocol, but also uh, nationally and regionally. Right. Okay. And we're going to talk a little bit about AAUs, which I have difficulty saying at this time of the day, or better known as, or more colloquially known as hot air. Uh, can you tell me what, explain for those who don't know what an AAU is, um, why some countries love them, uh, but many negotiators here don't like them at all? Yes, so let me just give you a little bit of history about these assigned amount units, how they are called. Um, when countries decided on the Kyoto Protocol, it was very important to get enough countries on board so the Kyoto uh, Protocol could be uh, enter into force. And um, that meant we needed Russia and other Eastern European countries. In order to entice them to join the Kyoto Protocol, they were allowed to take very weak targets. Uh, that, in other words, they were allowed to take emission reduction targets they had already met many times over. That had the effect that they were given a lot of these AAUs, which are basically emissions permits, uh, and now there are about 13 billion of these uh, pollution permits in the system, and the countries who own them, which are mostly Eastern European uh, Central and Eastern European states are now insisting that they want to keep them. So, so basically it's a license to pollute, to continue polluting, while at the same time saying, yes, we're sticking to all the agreements that we sign. That's exactly right. And on the current rules of the Kyoto Protocol, countries are allowed to bring all their surplus into the next commitment period, which basically would undermine any of the pledges that have been ma made if those 13 billion pollution permits are used. Yeah, what, what does that mean in real terms, in emission terms, 13 billion units? It basically means 13 billion tons of CO2 more. Um, so clearly, you know, knowing what we know about the two degree target, we cannot afford to use those 13 billion. Right, so, so if they're included in negotiations, if people are allowed to keep their AAUs, the second commitment period of, of the Kyoto Protocol, what does it mean? So. Right now, countries are looking to change the rules so that you cannot just take them all with you and also use them. And, and there is, as we can expect, there's two sides. There is, on the one hand, the countries that own a lot of the surplus that say, we don't want to give it up. And on the other hand, are countries like, uh, you know, AOSIS, the, the small island states, or the G77 that say, no, we cannot do that because that undermines the effectiveness of the Kyoto Protocol. Um, the, the issue that is interesting is that there's no demand for these. No one's going to buy them. So it's a little bit puzzling why those countries that have so many of those units insist on keeping them. And it's proving to be a sticking point within the European Union negotiations, isn't it? Especially with regards to Poland. Poland presumably has many AAUs and doesn't want to give them up. What does that mean for negotiations within the European Union? It makes negotiations very, very hard because it basically means the EU doesn't have a common position. And in terms of international negotiations, that means the EU just sits there silently and can actually not actively participate in searching for a solution. Um, so that has been proven extremely stifling. And uh, it, it really is undermining the EU's credibility. So this is why we NGOs are pushing the EU very hard to come up with a common position that actually is in line with their commitment of having environmental integrity in the second commitment period. Because right. at the same time, the EU will stand up and say, we're well on the way to meeting our targets of reducing emissions by 20%. We've reduced them by 18%. But AAUs presumably may make that mean nothing. This is not quite true. Um, the, the EU has certainly done quite a bit more than many other countries in terms of reducing emissions. But it is true that in terms of international obligations, if those AAUs, if that hot air is reduced, then we, we don't see any emissions reductions. And if those rules are, are prolonged after, pro, after 2020, we could see no emissions reductions um, until 26. 2026. So right. this is really serious issue. Okay, so just very clearly, loudly, what would you say? What, 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 what would uh, Carbon uh, Carbon Market Watch say to the negotiators in regards to the AAUs? What would your message be? 
uh, our message will be to the Central and Eastern European countries that um, it, it doesn't behoove you well to insist on keeping these, uh, hot, this hot air because you're not going to sell it to anyone and you're stifling the process. And if the result is that we have no second commitment period at all, they're completely worthless to you. So um, it's a high gamble and we're calling on them to come to the negotiating table with a sensible um, compromise. On the other hand, we're calling the EU, calling on the EU to come up with a common position, with a strong common position, so that we can have a second commitment period that has meaning and that accomplishes actual emissions reductions. Okay, great, thank you very much.